Hello and welcome, this is Rufalmonger, and my friends, this is my Android 16 Tips and Tricks Guide for Season 3.5 of Dragon Ball Fighters. As always, these videos, well, they're longer than usual, right? They're probably pretty long, so if you want to skip ahead, there's timestamps everywhere, uh, both in the video seek bar and in the video description, so just go to whatever sounds interesting to you. And with that said, let's start at the start here, and let's just go over his basic special moves. So first up for the special moves, we have the command grabs. It's a very big part of the character, right? And first up is the Dynamite Driver. This is the grounded Quarter Circle Forward series. So Quarter Circle Forward, light, medium, and heavy. And you might notice, well, the light's different in animation compared to the medium and the heavy, and that matters is actually very important. So first up here, the light version is the classic dunk. This is your proper command grab, and when you're looking to like catch people unawares, this is the one you're going to go for. And especially so when you're speaking about catching them unawares, this comes in at 17 frames. So this is basically tied for fastest command grab in the game. And it's a pretty solid one as well. Quarter circle forward, medium and heavy. Speed wise, maybe not so much. As you can see here, 28 frames. Uh, EX version 26 frames, not as fast, right? Uh, but, 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 you do get follow-ups. So you can always cancel into a quarter circle back dunk uh, for the medium version I see there and for the EX version you can just straight up get a super dash afterwards and just get a bit of a super dash combo so you get a little bit more damage there's also some interesting defensive properties of these and we'll cover those more in detail later in the video but suffice to say here uh, quarter circle forward light is your bread and butter in a lot of ways for this character both as the raw command grab and a lot of the time it's going to be one of your primary combo enders now the flying power bomb that is quarter circle backlight, medium, and heavy. And these are one of the main uh, combo initiators. You're going to be using this in combos a lot with the character. And they also have some defensive properties here. Uh, some mild anti-air invincibility, which uh, you can definitely use to help, you know, get super dashes and all that kind of stuff. As you can see there, the anti-air trigger prompted up there. Uh, keep in mind though, if they're lower to the ground, it can uh, sometimes not really work out in your favor. Um, you can catch them sometimes, but sometimes if they're very low to the ground, you get this exact situation. So for like a grounded super dash, maybe just go for, you know, a traditional down heavy, something like that. Now that said, outside of combos, uh, generally speaking, if someone's like directly above you, if you think you're going to be above you, go for it. Uh, leaves you in the air and you're air okay after the fact, right? So you can air dash, jump around. Um, whiffing it is fairly low risk, so uh, you can just kind of go for it, and most of the time, you're not going to get too much harassment for it. Now, the big thing to talk about here, the EX version, the heavy version here. Uh, so it has the initial hit, as you can see here, before it goes in, right? Two hits, as you can see. And that initial hit is a very important thing for him, which we're going to talk a lot more later in the video about, as one, it's a low... Meaning, yes, you do have to block that low, like crouching. If you're stand blocking, you're gonna get hit. And also, it's his single fastest move coming in in six frames. So stuff like stand drab, like a uh, seven framer, the crouch drab is just a little bit slower than that. So even his quote unquote quick light moves are slower than this guy right here. Now you gotta be pretty much right beside the enemy, right? But it has a lot of defensive value being his single fastest move and Long story short, which we'll cover more, uh, if you trade, like you and the enemy hit each other at the same time while you're going for this, you're definitely going to win out and uh, get a nice little bit of a reward for it. So look forward to that and click timestamps or wherever it's going to be. But yeah, so combo fodder for sure. And you can also get a little bit tricky with it. So gliding power bomb, this is air quarter circle forward light, medium and heavy. So very similar to uh, the quarter circle back series here. Uh, the air versions, which are different than the ground versions, are going to be primarily combo fodder, uh, except for in the rare situations when you go for the EX version due to its speed, trying to catch people air to air. So uh, the light version specifically, it works on almost like any layer of hits done. Like almost no matter how many hits you have in a combo, you'll be able to get it off. So you're going to be using this one a lot. It's going to be one of your primary combo tools. And once again, like other dunks, it brings you right to the ground, nice and easy. Uh, therefore, we you know whatever assists you want to use after the fact, this brings them nice and level. Very, very easy to play with assists. The medium version and the EX version, they also will 
toss the enemy and you kind of get regrounded. So in this example here, we're gonna use the EX version and it brings us back to the ground. We land and we can then super dash from there and just re chuck them, right? So it just grants a lot of combo re opportunity. Uh, if you're already in the corner, the medium version after your air SS will also work and you can just land, dunk them, all that kind of stuff. So once again, there's a couple outside uses which we'll bring up later in the video, but these uh, are just very much just part of your combo structure for the most part. Now we have Hell Heat. Now, Hell Heat is very interesting. Uh, on its own, you're not going to use it in combos too much outside of one of the new uh, Season 3.5 changes where you can like special cancel it after down H, which we'll talk about later in the video. Uh, but by itself, yeah, you're not going to use it too much. It's uh, basically a pressure check. Um, you're not just going to do it raw, but when you do do it, you're just basically looking for, okay, are you willing to hit buttons or are you not willing to hit buttons? If you're willing to hit buttons, quarter circle forward and S, it'll beat you out. Any button you hit, you're going to lose out. It smacks you. And quarter circle back S is very interesting. So if we set up our frame data here and we set ourselves to block, quarter circle back and S, this guy here, is one of the very few moves in this game. There is not many. That is plus on block and it's plus four. Uh, that's very high for moves to be plus on block, let alone being plus four, right? So this is basically, if you do this move and they block it, then hey, world's your oyster. Uh, there's nothing they can do to really get out of what you're going to do next. Even though you have like a slower jab, still seven frames. So it comes in on frame three, if you were to hit it right away, versus say a vanish, right? Uh, you're only plus two after vanish. So they can't really do anything defensively afterwards other than just block or reflect. If they try to match vanish or something, they're going to get hit. That's not going to work out. So you put the enemy basically in a neat little 50-50 situation of, well, okay, I'm going to dunk you or I'm just going to hit a button and it's up to you to guess which, you know, which one I'm going to do other than in fact, maybe you're just going to like mash level three super or something, right? So yeah, very interesting tool and we'll probably talk more about later in the video. Now for supers, you're going to see uh, a lot of repetition, I guess, because they all kind of involve him just ripping off his arms and shooting lasers at you. And first up here, level one, we got Hell Flash. So the grounded version and the air version. Let's talk here. Uh, first up here, the air version. Well, I guess it's got a big hitbox. Like it will hit from, you know, pretty far away. You're not gonna be using it much outside of maybe one specific example we'll cover later on. For the most part, it's not really a thing you're gonna concern yourself with. The grounded one though, well, on top of, you know, how you're gonna end 90% of your combos anyways, because you don't really have any other option. Uh, the one really good thing about it, unlike so many other supers, uh, it leaves you grounded. So that means you can't like, you know, air tech forward or something, try to get out of the corner. Uh, they only have the usual tech options from a regular knockdown. Uh, most supers, this is not the case, not necessarily to say every single super, but for most supers in the game, especially level one, it's not the case. So you can end whatever given combo with this, and you don't got to feel like you gave up an opportunity because they're just going to like air tech for tech out of the corner, right? Um, so considering you get to keep the normal pressure, it's just very handy. Now his level three is Hell Flash maximum output, and it's just the Omega Dunk, and he burns you up something fierce. Really, all to say about it, there's not much special about the move, to be frank. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to use it in situations where, like, you could just go for a grab anyways, because well, realistically, you go for the grab anyways, and then then you could do the level three, right? And so you just get more damage. Um, if you're just looking for like something invincible, I guess that is an option. It does have invincible startup like every other level three, but for the most part, you're never going to really be doing it raw. It's just basically speaking, combo ender, good damage, decent enough knockdown, uh, decent enough pressure, which we'll cover later in the corner. Pretty solid, pretty decent, but nothing special. Now, speaking of nothing special for the last super level three, he does have something special. And that is the last resort, this guy here. So when it happens, he connects and the other character is dead. End of story. Doesn't matter how much health, doesn't matter how much li like little health, doesn't matter anything. If it is connected, game over. And hey, just a little inside baseball. You watch uh, any of my combo videos and you always wonder why the damage is 50,000? Well, turns out, it does 50,000 damage. 
And just so you know, characters only have 10,000 health in this game. So uh, it's five times more damage than it actually needs to kill you. Just to let you know how much overkill it is. Now, one thing to note, if you manage to get this off here, that's great. Because it is hard to get it off, I'm not going to lie. Um, but the one thing here is it leaves you with a heck of a lot of blue life. 16 will die on the next anything that hits them, right? So if you are somehow lucky enough to get this off, I highly suggest, you know, get somewhere safe and then, you know, use that sparking blast to get that health back. Because otherwise, 16 is not going to be too much good for you too much longer. Now that all said, man, unless you're fighting someone who's really, really mashy, you're not going to get it off too often because there's a pretty big tail and you can just jump out. Like, it's not a big deal, right? The one thing to note here is 16 is like turbo invincible during it. He Once this starts, nothing can knock him out of doing it. There's nothing you could do to stop him. Uh, that's just all it is. He's invincible till after the grab would connect. End of story. So, if someone's like going very crazy and just mash, mash, mashing non-stop, maybe you'll get him. But you know what? There actually is a situation where you can guarantee you get it. Now, it's full of a bunch of ifs, <laughs> but we'll cover it later in the video. But there is one scenario where it is 100% guaranteed, and we'll talk about that later. Now, let's talk Android 16's assists. Assists are a very important part of any character, right? And he's been blessed uh, as a season 3.5 with, my opinion, one of the best assists in the game. Uh, but let's start at the start here. Let's talk, you know, the A assist. So the A assist is the classic. Used to be one of the strongest assists in the game. Nowadays, maybe not so much, but it's still pretty good. So first up here, before anything else, you know, hey, it does a hit. You know, you can combo after the hit, all that kind of stuff. Very easy for like uh, re-combos, all that kind of stuff, right? That stuff makes sense. Like that's the basics. But one of the very interesting things here is unlike many characters in the game, he appears ahead of you when he does it. So you do not need to be near the enemy. So this is roughly the range it can actually connect from, just so you're aware, right? Uh, so since he appears ahead of you, you can tailor a lot of block strings to that, right? A lot of characters usually appear in place with you, but you know you actually have more range than you would think if you just did it right beside the enemy. So that's just something to always keep in mind with it. Other than that, damage is all right. It's two hits. Uh, block stuns a little bit below average, but yeah, it, it's a workhorse, right? You certainly cannot go wrong picking it. It's always been old Star Wars, and maybe it's not as strong as it used to be. It's still pretty, I'd say, above average. But, you know, why settle for above average? That's what I'm asking you. Why not go for great? So let's talk the B assist and season 3.5. So Android 16, he's still a shadow of the character he used to be. Like, let's just get all the way real, right? But that is not on this assist. So this assist was changed up in season 3.5 of Dragon Ball Fighters, And he now does four consecutive shots. He'll do the first two, do a brief pause, and then do the second two shots, right? And this is amazing on every conceivable level. Uh, combo stuff, you're going to get crazy combos because you can do whatever hit, first round of reps, then your other hits, second round of reps come in, do even more from there. You can get uh, very optimal combos that will easily break hit stun decay if you're not careful with this guy, right? Um, a lot of your best potential for combos will come from something like this. It's amazing for combos. For screen control, well, yo... You have your first set of projectiles control the screen, uh, then you have a second set, right? It's not like, say, uh, Broly B, Super Saiyan Vegeta A, where, yes, they're both great at screen control, but it's kind of one and done. This is not the case. Now, yes, they count as weak projectiles, meaning uh, you can block and then reflect or block and then super dash through it. Yes, absolutely. But that is the inherent beauty of this. Uh, since there is the gap between the shots, one, the block sun's very low, so your opportunity to do that is pretty... Not great, honestly. Not great. But you can do something like this. You attack, attack, attack. You do your first thing. And then what you get to do effectively after that is go for any kind of mix-up or trick or gimmick. And if you got it, great. Then the second shots help confirm into a combo. And if not, then the second shots basically cover your mess up, right? And then you can go from there. Uh, just, I don't know how to 
impress upon you how good this is without just gushing and gushing and gushing. But this is sincerely an assist with like near limited potential. Maybe it's not the brute force hammer like a GT Goku A assist is. Because uh, I still think that's probably the best assist in the game. But this is one of the better assists in the game for sure on every level you could want an assist for. And his C assist, well, it's one of those. It's not great. Uh, unlike, say, Broly's C assist, doesn't even have the armor, so he can't even, like, give it that. He'll teleport to you, and that's about it. Uh, there's, like, no air okay part of it, doesn't track or anything. He just kind of shoulders you, and that's about it. Um, look for this only if you want, like, the C assist, like, combo ability. And once again, when we're talking about combo ability, with a little bit of effort, a little bit of learning, you'll get a lot more combo potential out of the B assist anyways. So I cannot really recommend the C assist in any way, shape, or form, sadly. But yeah, assist, A is okay, B is great. Don't really worry about the C too much. Now, let's talk notable normals. Uh, 16, maybe not one of the better characters in the game anymore, sure. But he has a lot of working for him here. Let's talk Stanlight. So Stanlight is a 7 frame jab, so it's not a faster one, sadly, right? But for a 7 frame jab, yo... It's got the range, as you can see here. Uh, most moves could not begin to even think from connecting this far away, unless it was like a medium or something, right? And no, just seven frame jab for 16. And say, uh, compared to like uh, Broly, right? Broly, he has a big seven frame jab too, but his, well, not so much against the smaller characters and sometimes people crouching, and a lot of people can run underneath it, right? For 16, it doesn't matter how small you are, how low to the ground you are, he will always connect with the range. So the range, as you can see here, pretty serious, right? So don't be afraid to just bully people with this. Because when you're standing roughly at this range, nothing can connect as far, as fast, as one of 16's jabs. Quick note here about Stand M. One of the things about Stand M is it always forces a grounded foe. Uh, it's one of the things that makes his re-jump work. Uh, so if you do, you know, kind of standard re-jump stuff here. Unlike many other characters, he doesn't need to, like, immediately, like, dash for jump, all the kind of stuff. He doesn't need to worry about it. Because, one, hits up very high. It's all one giant vertical hitbox. And since it always re-grounds the foe, and you can just jump cancel it, that means you just can follow through. No fuss, no muss. So just something to keep in mind. So now to talk about his basic key blast. You know, they're pretty standard in a lot of ways, I guess you could say. Uh, they're certainly not like Big Broly or nothing, right? They don't plow through everything else. But the one thing that makes them very useful is uh, you don't got to be too precise about them. As the moves actually have uh, some limited tracking, as you can see here. So wherever the enemy is, it will try its best to auto-correct. Uh, it's not going to be like, you know, do a harsh 90 degree angle or anything. But uh, the fact that it does track a fair bit is not nothing. So when it comes to just doing stuff like that, any other key blast right there would have missed. End of story, right? Here, well, turns out 16 connects and he can get a bit of a vanish combo. Go from there. So it's certainly very valuable for him. So you can kind of become a threat from a lot of non-traditional angles. And even just your basic full screen shot. Uh, if enemy is any kind of flitting around, it will still catch them in a lot of angles in the air, so keep it in mind. So the homing is not total, but it is pretty good, and considering no one else really gets that, hey, you gotta keep it in mind. Now to talk about Stan Heavy. So it's another move that's certainly far from its prime. Uh, certainly far from the Season 1 glory days, right? But what it is, is what it is, and it's still a solid battering ram, right? Uh, it covers a lot of space for what it is, goes very far, as you can see, uh, and, you know, from that point, hey, you can just do whatever you want. And the thing also to note here is, uh, it does still have armor, uh, so against physical attacks, and this is specifically highs and mids, not lows, uh, you can still armor through stuff. Now, the armor doesn't start right away, uh, it starts on, I believe, frame 13, and from 10-ish frames afterwards, it's active. But it is something just to kind of keep in mind, right? So when you're just trying to bully around, hey, it's always good to just have that tool and just use it for the blunt force hammer that it is. 
So now let's talk combo structure and the rule of three dunks, as this is a very important thing. And if you don't know how to play 16 just yet, you're going to have to learn this really fast. Otherwise, you're going to get really confused why your combos seemingly keep on dropping. So specifically, you are allowed three dunks per combo. You know, hey, your old big old power bombs, right? And you cannot surpass that. And specifically also, you're only allowed one of each. And what are these one of each? So one is any quarter circle back dunk. So it doesn't matter if it's in the air, doesn't matter if it's grounded, just you're allowed one of these, that's it, that's all. Once you use a quarter circle back dunk, that is it, you cannot use another. Now secondly is any aerial quarter circle forward dunk. So this could be light, medium, heavy, doesn't really matter, but you're allowed one of those in the air. So once again, one quarter circle back, aerial or grounded, you're allowed one. Aerial quarter circle forward, you're allowed one, and you're allowed one grounded quarter circle forward, which is almost always going to be quarter circle forward and light. So if you were to structure any basic combo, just to show you an example here. So here's how we're going to start here. We're going to start with quarter circle back dunk. This guy here. And now we're going to go in the air, quarter circle forward dunk, get another assist, and then a grounded quarter circle forward light dunk. So we used all three. Now say we try to do quarter circle back twice in the combo. Just goes right through them. Can't do it. Same deal here if I tried to jump. It's just going to go through them, right? Uh, now, let's say I tried to do two quarter circle forward aerial dunks. Not going to work out so good for me. Okay, so here's the first one. Grounded foe now. And just goes right through them. So, can't do it. So, just to impress upon you. One quarter circle back dunk, air ground, one aerial quarter circle forward dunk, and one grounded quarter circle forward dunk. You cannot do more than one of each of these in a combo. Just keep it in mind. Now, uh, in the one exception to this rule here, if you do a quarter circle back dunk, and then you immediately do the EX version, you'll still get the first hit. Now, the grab won't connect, but you will get that first hit here because that part is not part of the grab. That is a combo you're allowed to do uh, just so you know, but yeah, so that is the one exception, but you still don't get the grab in the end So keep this in mind. It's super critical for combo structure. And if you don't know this, you're gonna Drop a lot of combos basically All right, so this whole section is going to be dedicated to quarter circle back and H your EX anti-air dunk So first up, it's a single fastest attack comes in at six frames of startup So anything else he does well decidedly not six frames let's put it that way right so against characters that have six frame moves you know like say gt goku or you know half the cast really uh this is the only thing that keeps you from losing in pressure wars so to give an example here after the universal overhead 6m is blocked you're both zero right and he's gonna attack with a light punch right away so if i just smash light i'm gonna lose 100 times out of 100 i've lost because my move is simply a frame slower so he always 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 will win out other in situations where he doesn't have the range like that, right? But point blank, he always wins out. But however, if I do quarter circle back heavy, all of a sudden they both connected at the same time, right? However, if we trade at the same time, all I took was a jab. What he took was the beginning of the move and the beginning of that move launches. And yes, my friends, that absolutely means you get to combo convert from it. So if you were so inclined, you could do something like this. Hey, there we go, right? A uh, pretty good conversion off a, a quick trade, right? Not bad at all, I'd say. And that is one of the things. So if you trade, you get combo opportunity. Whereas, you know, they kind of just, they don't get much. So that is one thing you will always win a trade in a very large fashion. And in those situations, if they block, well, whatever. You know, you're, you're airborne, like almost right away. So you can dash, jump out of the way, you can do whatever you want to do, right? Punishment and consequence is very rare. Not to say impossible, but uh, since you recover right away, the move is completely safe too. You cannot punish the move directly. It's just simply the situation you find yourself in. That is something to keep in mind. And yes, uh, jump medium does connect from there, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, so very low risk and you know, so-so reward, right? So you get uh, anywhere from like 2k, 3k, 4k follow-up, depending on the bar you want to spend. And yeah, it's just really good. Once again, it's fastest move. Also, it's a low, 
So um, if they're just asleep at the wheel, stand blocking or whatever, it will catch them as well. Now also, like the dunks, it has the anti-air property, right? No uh, invincibility against aerial attacks. However, unlike the other two dunks, the invincibility is on the first possible frame. So defensively, it makes it much stronger. And also, it can beat certain safe jump setups. So many reversals in the game, the reason the safe jump works is because the reversal is very slow, right? Uh, be it the level three or be it the dragon punch, it takes a fair number of frames to get to where it's going. Since uh, this attack starts up in six frames, a lot of safe jump setups actually can lose to them. Now, not all of them, some still get the block in time, but a fair bit of them actually lose up. And since your air invincible frame one, well, there you go. So if they safe jump set up and then immediately like crouch block, if it was one of the setups that, you know, could beat it, then you just bop them, right? So defensively, very strong, as well as just forcing trades and all that kind of stuff. It's just very, very good. Also, while you're both just, you know, flitting around, or if you're just trying to catch someone, it comes out lightning fast compared to uh, the one with comparable range, the medium one, much faster, right? So if you're looking to snatch people out of the air, well, hey, there you go. So this move is fantastic. Keep it in mind in a lot of situations, it's your fastest move, has a lot of good defensive properties, and it will keep you safe in a lot of ways where just a lot of other options will fail you. Now, for Android 16, one of the bigger boons he got in Season 3.5 of Dragon Ball Fighters is the change to his grounded quarter circle forward medium and quarter circle forward heavy, EX if you will, dunks. Because they are immune to all projectiles and all assists. And this is a pretty big deal. So, say similar to like a cooler, right? Cooler, he gets to go through beams and projectiles, all that kind of stuff. And 16, same deal. You can just go clear through it, easy peasy. And he can go through more than just basic key blasts, like uh, Goku here, right? Uh, GT Goku, that is a true beam, so no super dashing through it. And yet, we can just go through it easy peasy, lemon squeezy with quarter circle four medium or heavy, right? So that's fantastic. And yes, it can go through assists. So any given assist, be it a beam, basic key blast, whatever, he can go through it just fine. But here's the really cool part of this, right? So yes, it can go through all sorts of projectiles, but when I mean it can go through assists, it doesn't have to be a projectile for the assist. It can be a physical hit and it'll still go through it. Now it can't go through physical hits of the main character. So whatever the main character is doing can't go through that, but any assists, it's fine. So they could be calling like a dragon punch assist, you know, something that's somewhat invisible won't stop 16. So if they're just sitting there down backing, you know, like trying to have that take care of their issues and their woes for them, 16 will go through them like they weren't there. So that is really fantastic. A lot of other moves that go through projectiles, they lose straight up to physical hits. And yes, it'll lose if the main character does a physical hit, but he doesn't have to suffer through whatever the assist is going to do. No matter what that assist is, it cannot gain purchase on 16 while he's doing his dunks. So it lets you be ignorant in a way he never was able to before. Now, granted, here's the one weakness, if we gotta ascribe a weakness to this, it's still a grounded grab, right? So if they're any kind of in the air while they're doing this, you're not gonna get them. And no, the aerial versions do not have the same property uh, defensive issues, right? You cannot do that with uh, 16. So just keep that in mind. But still, when it gets to be a more grounded war, if you're up against that Broly and all he's doing is spamming key blasts, he can go through that easy peasy. If you're up against someone who's just down backing and hiding behind assists, you don't have to sweat it one lick. It is absolutely something to keep in mind and utilize when appropriate. Now let's talk the self-destruct. Self-destruct, hey, it's a cool move. Realistically, you're not gonna get it off very often. Let's put it that way, right? But there is one actual, for real, guaranteed way to get the move. And what do we need to do it? Well, we need 16, obviously enough. We'll need three bars to do the move, obviously enough. And we'll need Android 18, and we'll need her A assist. And with these things in mind, you can get a guaranteed self-destruct off in a very specific situation. And what is that situation? Well, it's canceling a guard cancel. So if you can catch a guard cancel happening and you have uh, 18's assist live and ready to go and you have enough meter, you can totally pull it off. So what makes this work is this. When you catch a guard cancel, normally you block it and get whatever punish, right? 
Uh, so if you were to block it and then go for it, you would never get it. They land in time. Like, it's just not going to work, right? But uh, if you call 18 and do the barrier assist, what they're going to do is bounce off her first. So conversely, uh, if you were to do it and, like, go for it right away, they'll still land first and, like, it's not going to work. They'll have enough time. But um, if they don't bounce off you and they bounce off 18 instead, it just lets them stay in the air just a little bit longer and it makes everything go. So when done correctly, you just call 18 right after the guard cancel flash and immediately do the self-destruct and it looks like this. And that's all there is to it. You got it. Done. So now I'm going to turn inputs on just so you can see me. I'm going to switch over to the other character and I'm going to do my dangness to try to jump out just to prove to you there's no way out. This is 100% airtight. All right, trying to jump out. Couldn't do it. No way out. So the timing is strict. If you're slow or sloppy, they will have time to jump out. But if done correctly, it's truly airtight. There is no way out. You actually have a guaranteed kill on the guard cancel. Now, yes, a lot of characters, you can get a touch of death after a guard cancel. All that kind of stuff. But it's not as cool, right? Why burn effort doing a combo? Why waste your valuable time when you can just get it done with in a single hit? That's what I say to you. So this is how you guarantee a self-destruct with Android 16. Now let's talk Ariel down heavy. This guy here, the big boots. Now, Dr. Doom foot dive, this guy is not, to put it lightly, but it did get changed in season 3.5 of Dragon Ball Fighters to make it a bit better. Now, first up, the core move, just so you know, it is a true overhead, right? So you do have to block this guy standing, so that is something. You can't just crouch block it. Now, here's the thing, though. If you connect with it, the enemy is allowed to tech immediately, so you're not really going to get too much out of it other than the raw hit, but just something to know. But here's the new big deal in Season 3.5 of Dragon Ball Fighters. So if this move connects, it'll always give you, like, a smash hit, like a grounded hit, you know, for a sliding knockdown, regardless, really, if you use the property or not. So that's really good. Very good for longer combos. And from that point here, that is now special cancelable into the Hell Heat laser. So you actually can follow up. And since the enemy is grounded as of the time of uh, that follow-up, if you hit him in the air and get the smash property, you know, as you see there, you get a sliding knockdown if you use it in the combo. So it's a way to basically OTG off the ground the enemy and just get some more damage than you otherwise would. Now, unfortunately, at the beginning of Season 3.5, when we had the patch notes, I thought this might, like, revolutionize combo structure, that kind of stuff. And, eh, maybe not so much. For the most part, you just generally get the same damage you would have anyways doing the normal combos. However, the one thing to note here is if uh, you used up the rule of three, right? So you want to get a sliding knockdown or you just want something big before you go into supers. And you, you hecked up, right? Like your opportunities have gone. You've already used up all your dunks. You ain't getting any more, right? This is something, especially in the air. Because uh, if you're already in the air and you already used up your quarter circle forward and your quarter circle back, this guy is now your only opportunity to bring it down to the ground again. So to show you like kind of, you know, a basic corner bread and butter combo, right? Here we're using our quarter circle forward dunk. So that's already used up now. And here we're going to use up our quarter circle back. So those two are used. Can't use them anymore. But we still got two assists to work through, right? So if we want to get maximum damage, then all of a sudden it's time to bring this guy in. So in this combo example you're about to see here, I'm going to use all three dunks. Uh, I'm going to do quarter circle forward uh, and quarter circle back in the air first. Then I'm going to use this guy and use the Hell Heat to uh, re-OTG him and then use another assist. And then we're going to go for our final quarter circle forward light dunk. And there you have it. So I used up all three dunks. And since uh, I already used up two of them at the beginning of the combo, and I still want to use both my assists. This basically becomes more filler to be able to use all my assists, right? So a revolution in 16 combo structure, maybe not. But still, it's another tool in the toolbox. And you should be aware of what it can do. One thing to mention here is a little bit of a trick Android 16 can use with lower block stun assists. 
So this is far from the glory days where he could do this by himself, but with an assist, it's still possible. So the final hit of Android 16's auto combo is a true grab. So you can block all day long, right? As you can see, the enemy is blocking everything, but that's a true grab. Just as true as like quarter circle forward light or any of that stuff, right? And you can actually, in the middle of a block string, force it and make it happen. And that will be through the use of low blocks on assists. So we're using Trunks as our example here. Now he's not the lowest blocks on assists in the game, but as you see here, 14 frames, right? Uh, most assists are like anywhere from like 25, 30 frames blocks on. So this is like almost like half the usual amount. So the enemy recovers faster. And you think, well, the enemy recovering faster, that's a bad thing. But for our needs and uh, use here, it's absolutely perfect. So normally, we can delay as much as we want that last hit, right? The enemy will just simply not leave blocks done before the grab can happen. We're not allowed to do it by ourselves like we could in Season 1. And trust me, it was really broken back then. Uh, but what we can do is do our first two hits then call our low block stun assist, and then go for the grab. And what's gonna happen is this. So the block stun of the second hit of the auto combo will be immediately overwritten by the block stun of the assist. And what's gonna happen is basically that block stun, because it's very low, will run out very quickly, and effectively the enemy will just return the neutral right as our grab is connecting, meaning we can grab them in the middle of a block string. So we're just going to start with Crouch Light, which is one of his best checks. It's really good. And we're going to go that into Stand Light into the Auto Combo. And you know what? You're going to do this all the time. This is not some rare fantasy situation. This is almost the standard. You're going to do this all the time. And hey, wouldn't you know it? Just got dunked. And then, of course, from there, follow up, do whatever combo. So what I'm doing timing-wise specifically is uh, between the down light and the stand light, that's when I'm calling the assist, and then I'm just letting them take over the hit from the second hit of the auto combo, and from that point, it's that easy. Just small delay on the final hit, and then all of a sudden, they're in a true mix-up situation, because you can just grab them, or, you know, you don't have to do nothing. You can just go for, like, mediums or something, right? So if they try to jump out or whatever, you can just crash them out of the sky really quick. So... People with lower blocks on assist, and if you want to know the frames of uh, assist, all I got to go, uh, info display, turn on frame advantage, make them block, and then, hey, whatever the number says, that's their frame advantage, that's it, right? So anything that's like 14 and lower, that is low, and if it's 14 or lower, you can pull off a trick like this. This is just a quick little quality of life note, uh, and he's definitely not the only character that can do this, but uh, his jump light hits very, like, deep, hits very low. So if you're doing stuff like um, deep angle super dashes, you can easily like just be on top of people and easily tap them in the head. Uh, not everyone can do it, and the people that can, a lot of them can't do it as good as him. So just keep that in mind that it's very easy for him to keep the offense up. Even on smaller characters, even on smaller characters that are crouching, doesn't really matter. Uh, just due to the angle, he can just really just easily tap people in the head. And I guarantee you, you will catch a lot of people sleeping at the wheel at that point. So not he's not the only guy who can do it, but he can do it better than most that can. So just keep it in mind. In this segment, we're just going to give you the one real use, I guess, if you want to call it that, for the aerial health flash. It's not very good 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100. You don't really want to use it. But this is uh, just an edge case for like a B&B &B combo if you got some bar to burn, where it gives you a somewhat favorable setup. So like standard corner, bread and butter combo, all that kind of stuff. During this, okay, we used a quarter circle forward dunk. And we're using quarter circle back dunk right here. So we can get like the X off, but it's not going to connect, right? But it does bring us up air to air. And it puts us directly in line with the enemy. So we can, at that point, get super. And actually gives us some mildly decent pressure afterwards. So right there, 
uh, you are air okay after the super is over. So you have your air mobility options, I meaning you can jump, you can dash, all that kind of stuff. And it leaves you in such a position, if they're to immediately tech up or anything, you're just directly on top of them and it crushes everything. So if you land or if you finish the move, immediately like forward air dash and jab, it'll beat out vanishes, uh, down heavies, it's a safe jump, has a lot of opportunities and a lot of applicable stuff. Uh, if they up tech, it still catches them. If they up tech jump, it still catches them. Uh, it basically gives you super strong pressure no matter what you do. So you got to spend a half bar more than usual because you got to burn that EX, right? But it is pretty strong and so low with no assists, you know, he needs an assist for a lot of stuff. Uh, it's actually a handy technique that you should keep in mind every now and then. Now it's time for talking about Okizame, pressure after a knockdown, all the kind of stuff. And let's start with just the, the cornerstone of all this. That's the dunk, quarter circle forward light. Now, either if it's by itself or if it's in the middle of a combo, you're going to be doing this a lot, right? So let's just give you the basic thing you need to know, and that is how to pressure afterwards. It's actually pretty easy. So all you need to do after you do it is tiny delay and then just do instant air dash, light, light. And if they back tech, you get them. And if they up tech, you're also gonna get them. Go. All you need, just that tiny delay, and then just follow through. And here's why we do light light, because it's right there. So if they up tech and they hit a button, or they're trying to vanish out or something, as long as you hit light light, you'll get and follow up with the auto combo. It'll automatically keep height, which is very important. And then you can do all sorts of follow ups, whatever you can dream up, whatever you can desire, right? It's pretty easy bake oven, Oki. Not gonna lie to you, but you know what? Simple is never a bad thing. Simple is perfect, right? So that's all you need to do. If they wanna be cute and delay tech, then it's kind of whatever, and you just wind up on the other side. And afterwards, you're also directly in range of stand light, which probably outranges them. So you just have just strong options no matter what you do. Also, if they wanna reverse, It is indeed a safe jump as well, right? So not too complex, not multi-layered, multi-threaded. It doesn't need to be. It's just good. So, hey, there you go. Also, for now, he's level 3 in the corner. Very easy. Don't got to think too hard about it. Uh, just immediately after you do your level 3, instant air dash, either light or heavy, and it hits ultra meaty. So there's no down heavying it. There's no vanishing out of it. There's no invincible reversal because it's a true safe jump. Uh, so yeah, very easy bake oven. And uh, you can just get a little you know, tricky with it. You can just like empty and go for like, you know, grab right away when you land. Or you can just go for the hit and then like don't follow up and just go for another grab. Just wait a split second because if you do it right away, then uh, you can't hit him during the animation, right? Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty simple, pretty basic, but yeah, that's fine. That works. Don't need complex. 16 is not about being complex. To talk about where 16 belongs in a team and his general game plan. So first, let's talk about the team stuff. So I believe now as 16 stands, he can work any point of a team, but with a big but. So assist wise, his B assist, man, so good. So good. One of the best assists in the game now, right? So it is very beneficial to you forming your team to have that always on deck, right? So as a mid, as an anchor, sure. But here I'm gonna say, while he can work in all three, I think he's so much better as a mid or a point than the anchor, even though yes, you can do as an anchor. So as a mid, you have immediate access to the assist, that's great. You can do whatever gimmicks and gigas and whatever you can dream of, it's all yours to work with, right? So that's awesome. Now also as a point character, um, Part of the thing with 16 is he's very greedy when it just comes to like basic combo structure. He loves them assists uh, because outside of like the rejump combos, he can't really get sliding knockdowns by himself. Uh, he can in the corner if you want to like lose all your damage because then you can just end with uh, the new uh, jump down heavy. Uh, but that's not really something I would recommend. Now, if people flip out due to like just how belligerent jump light is, you can catch a lot of people. So it's not too bad in that regard. 
Uh, but yeah, so by himself, you're going to be burning a lot of bar on Vanishes because a lot of the time, uh, Vanish is going to be just your only real option for getting any kind of knockdown, you know, like, because it'll be able to get, get, get your uh, light dunk, which gives you the knockdown you want. So as a point, you get to be greedy. You get to have those two assists to do all that kind of stuff. Help your combo structure, help bring them to the corner, all that kind of stuff. And that's great. And as a mid, then you may have immediate access to uh, your good assists. So those are the ones I would recommend more than uh, the anchor position personally. If you want to run a anchor, I would definitely say before season 3.5, no. But since, you know, B assist got so strong now, then I, I guess you can do it. I just don't think it's his uh, best bet though. So point or mid, sure. Anchor, only if you really believe in it. Now, as for general game plan, just to hit the most basic points home, Yo16 has big boy range. From stand light, uh, jump M's very good. Uh, stand heavy hits like 75% of the screen away, if not further, and has armor. You got tools to be belligerent with, absolutely. So just, yo, work with it. Jump light, also one of the better jump lights in the game. You got a lot of just strong buttons. Stand M's really good. Also rips people out of the sky. The tools are there. Uh, yo, one of the better key blasts, so like, just use your normals. A lot of characters, they got to think a little harder, you know, how to get in, you know, what to use, where, all that kind of stuff. Uh, 16, you get to play, I mean this in the best possible way, but you get to play a little bit more stupid, right? Uh, one thing to note here, um, frame data wise, <laughs> 16, uh, he struggles a little bit, right? Um, like, yo, like Stan Heavy, we just talked about it, it's punishable on block, so like, one of the things you want to do there is force an immediate guessing game. Uh, so at this point, you must go into um, your uh, light health flash, uh, core circle forward S rather, versus the core circle back S one. And if they try to challenge in any way, they will get bopped. It's only negative one, right? Uh, so that's fine. So if they try to challenge in any way, then you can do this and then like immediately backdash if they block that, whatever. If they hit a button and hits, fine. Uh, basically beats everything but reflect, right? And at which point, you can just go for the dunk. <laughs> so you get to build a nice little, you know, will he, won't he kind of deal. You can definitely use your poor frame advantage to your advantage, basically. Because uh, once people get used to that kind of stuff, then okay, well, we'll wait it out. And once they start waiting out, well, screw you. Now we're going to cancel into quarter circle back. And... Now we're plus on block. Now we're once again, you know, in the strike throw blender. And at which point, well, then, okay, well, I'm going to challenge you. And at which point, if you start challenging me, then I can start, you know, doing this again, right? And then I smack you out of it. So that's a really good thing. And speaking of frame data here, so that's bad. The only thing he has, like, good frame data on is uh, Crouch Light. Like, everything else is bad. <laughs> it is uh, not good, to say the least, right? Uh, so down light is negative four. So while it's not the best stagger button in the game, uh, it's uh, the best one he has. And you know what? Like, the range on it is titanic. Considering it's a true low, right? It's not like one of those deals where a lot of other characters get where, like, they get robbed of it being a low. His is a low, and it hits from a range that, like, most characters, like, that'd be their medium or something, right? So that's really good. So we can just kind of do it. It does chain into itself. So, uh, you know... So you can go like one, one, two, something like that to catch him mashing or something. At which point also we can go for a dunk or something. So being negative four, it basically uh, is your best chance to stagger. And you want to use this to like kind of catch buttons. Now after your second chain, can't do too much. But after your second chain, uh, they're pushed out a fair bit, right? They can't do too much about it. So that also works in your favor. Another thing he offers that's very strong is just general screen control. Uh, so he has the air dunks here, uh, core circle back series on the ground or in the air, and they're head invulnerable, aka anti-air, on frame 4, and the EX is on frame 1, right? So at any given moment, it is not safe to be above Android 16. Uh, given just how fast the uh, anti-air property kicks in, and, you know, like, it goes a good distance, right? Anytime you're directly above them, you're risking a lot, right? Because he can just rip you to the ground. Now, by himself, nothing else. 
Uh, a dunk is not a big reward necessarily, but he can still always at least, you know, convert it into like a level one super. And once again, he has a level one super that leaves a grounded foe. They don't get to uh, air tech, you know, that's all the options air tech gives you. So that is pretty good. But, you know, you can't afford to take too many stray hits, right? If he randomly uh, catches you with uh, an air grab and he's got the bar to work with, that's not health you can afford to lose let's just be frank about it right so one thing as 16 uh between your big normals the key blast you want to harass people with you know also very easy for hit confirms to advantage which is fantastic uh due to the nature of the hit stop uh when you're doing that just keep in mind okay people want to play around it they want to play a mobility game and playing the mobility game against 16 it's hard when you're below them hey bob's your uncle but when you're above them uh, this is one of the biggest strengths that you actually get to abuse because it is not good because he'll be like a ninja turtle in the sewers and he'll just drag you down with him, right? You ever hear those stories? I don't know. I'm older. You know, the kids playing ninja turtles in the sewers get lost. I don't know. That, that was the story back in the day. And I'm leaving this in the video. I don't care. Post in the comments about your playing turtles in the sewers or kids got lost playing Dungeons and Dragons in the sewer story. If you're older than 30, I got them. But yeah, the whole thing with that is uh, basically I would call it not high risk, low reward because it's more like medium reward, low risk. Because once again, of course, he's air okay after if it whiffs. So like whatever, like it's not a big deal. Also, if you want to be tricky, if you want to tiger knee the motion, so just do quarter circle back, then up back and then hit it. So immediately giving you the air version, you do get super jump uh, air control so he can be cute and like float over. All that kind of stuff. You would need like higher blocks on assist to make anything out of that. But it is an option on the table. But in the end, a lot of your tools are basically just big hammers. And uh, as the old saying goes, when you have a hammer, every problem starts looking like a nail. So just start using it like that. Just brute force a lot of your way through it. And you know what? That's exactly what he excels in. So got to do exactly that. Now, as for a final thought on the character, he's not great. Like, you get all the way real, right? He's not great. Uh, he's better off, though. He's better off, right? He's not wretched anymore. Uh, he's eventually gotten enough slow, you know, buffs over the years after they absolutely crippled him, though. Don't get me wrong. Like, before, he was debatably the best character in the game back in, you know, Season 1, along with Kid Buu. And he got a million nerfs, and Kid Buu got a million nerfs. And 16 went to, like, almost the worst character in the game, and slowly he's been crawling back up. And Kid Buu's been debatably still the best character in the game, even after all the nerfs, right? So one got hit a lot harder than the other. But he's definitely getting there. Between, like, the changes that let you just, like, kind of go brain dead and get past any zoning and assist with the grab changes, that's good. He's always had better than average key blast. That's strong. 17 frame command grab with strong Oki afterwards. Um, any grab into a level one is, like, 25% right there. So, you can't sneeze at that, right? So, if you want a more simpler character that can still lay down the beats and, you know, isn't used to death, because unfortunately, as per character usage polls, uh, 16 is uh, one of the least played characters in the game now. So, if you want to just, you know, slap it to that army of UI Gogus and show them what a true character who's on his way back up, hopefully the godhood, come season 4 is all about, 16 is your boy. And my friends, hey, that's the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video's found you well. Go out and play some Dragon Ball.